All right, I'm finally gonna talk shit. Composting toilet, that is. So grab some gloves and let's dig in. All right, so sometimes we get asked how we go to the bathroom off grid, if you know what I mean. Well, have you ever heard of a composting toilet? Okay, maybe you know about composting, maybe you even know about composting toilets, but a composting toilet is something that closes the loop on our cycle. So say we're gonna eat our fruits and vegetables and then it's gonna go through us, our body's gonna use whatever it needs from it, and then the waste is gonna come out. But in this system, we don't call that waste. That's gold, okay? So instead of taking a shit, you're giving a shit because your compost is gonna turn into soil. Okay, stay with me here. Sometimes when you throw around that poop word, people get all grossed out. Well, it needs to go somewhere. And so a lot of times in our modern society, in our Western society especially, we have a toilet that's full of clean water. Where in third world countries, they don't even have clean water or they have to go miles just to find clean water. And we're peeing and pooping in clean water and flushing it down the toilet. Something tells me that this is backwards. Why would we waste all of that water just to go to the bathroom? Especially if it's just a number one. All right, don't get me wrong. I'm living off the grid, so I've just gotten used to watering the plants if it's a number one. But number two, that's a whole nother story. There is a book called The Humanure Book and The Composting Toilet Handbook. It is written by a guy that has been using a system like this since the 1970s. He goes to third world countries all over the world, and he's been doing this for a very, very long time, and he's helped them to really uh, transform their system of, of how they manage their waste. In many of these countries, they have a hole to take a crap in. It's very dangerous. Kids fall in, they can die. It's very unsanitary. It smells horrible, it breeds all kinds of diseases, and then it poisons the water. So what do they do? They set up composting toilet systems. With the composting toilet system, everything goes right back to the earth and it gives you soil for your plants. All right, so take a look at ours right here. This is our composting setup, okay? Very simple, very easy. You don't need one of those expensive tumblers or whatever. You don't need to tumble your compost. Just have a certain system that you use let it break down and it gives you fresh soil and fertilizer for your plants. Ours, we put everything. We put organic scraps, we put food. You can even break down a dead animal. You can, it breaks down bones, it breaks down practically anything. It can break down toxic waste. The microbes in this system just really break down everything and it's going to sit there for a year after you've finished adding to the pile. So anything that was even remotely toxic in there is going to break down whether it heats up or not. Check this one out. We finished it up a couple months ago and it's gonna sit there for a year. I had a thermometer, but it broke. So I know it heats up, but it doesn't even matter because it has the right amount of everything in it. So for compost, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need nitrogen, carbon, and water. There are certain ratios of those things, but I don't really get too analytical over. You're gonna need mostly carbon. You're gonna need some nitrogen, which is your organic material, your food waste, and anything that's green. Carbon is all your dry stuff. You're gonna mostly need that, and then you're gonna need some water. The water is a very, very important key because it's going to make everything fluid so that all those microbes that are having a party in there can travel freely and they can move around and they can do their thing. So the way this system works is it's basically like a cubic meter of space right here. It's going to have what they call a bio sponge on the bottom, which is about 18 inches of your dry material. So any liquid that's going to drip down, it's going to catch it. So it's not going to drip out everywhere and you know, and contaminate the area around it. As you can see, we started this one a couple months ago and we have already made um, a bunch of deposits in here and it's going to 
go down over time it's going to settle the sides are also going to have some of that bio sponge as well not as thick and that's just to keep everything contained so most of your deposits are going to go right in the middle and today it's that time again so all of those buckets are going to go into that compost when you're doing a composting toilet it's very very simple it's a five gallon bucket and you're going to put it in what they call here in mexico a cacajón <laughs> which is a box basically that that it fits in and it has a toilet seat on it so it's just like going to a regular toilet just no water as you use it and you fill up the bucket you cover it up as you go with organic material so it's going to be some type of carbon whatever you have leaves sawdust things like that it's going to cover it up another thing to mention with this is there's no smell there's no flies or anything like that everything is is covered up and look, this is a compost with anything you can think of in there. And there's no flies and there's no smell. All right, so what we're going to do today, you're going to want some gloves if you're doing this, obviously. And these gloves are only going to be used for this type of job. You don't want to use gloves that you use for everything else. We're going to make a little bit of space in, in the middle here. So that we have an area to dump these buckets in we're probably going to build up the sides with some leaves that we have so that we're kind of making an indentation in the middle and that's where all of our toilet material is going to go after we deposit all the, the buckets we're going to cover everything up really well with some dried leaves that we have and we're going to clean the buckets out with Usually some gray water that we have that we've already used to maybe wash clothes with or some rainwater that we've collected. It's not usually going to be like the really good water that we're using for uh, showering because we're buying water from our neighbors right now until we get our well set up. So we clean the buckets out and that water is going to go right into the compost. We're going to let the buckets dry out and then we're ready to fill them back up again. So these buckets of toilet material right here are going to go in here. All right, so we are done here and we're not going to be doing this again for another probably three or four months. We do this about yeah, every three months or so, so four times a year. That way... We don't have to be doing it all the time. Now, if you're if you're off grid, there's two things that you need to take care of right away. Is first your water, and it's what you're gonna do with your with your human waste. So here it is. This one's full. It's definitely gonna sink down quite a bit. So we're probably gonna start another pile for the next round. But this one, I've had that sitting for about three months, and it's gone down about six inches or so so it definitely compacts one thing i wanted to add too is when i dug out the first layer of the compost that was already there it was super hot it was super steamy so that means it's active okay it's not completely necessary for your compost to be hot and active even if it doesn't heat up it's still doing something as long as it sits there for at least a year when you use this model everything has plenty of time to break down but either way, even if it's hot, everything could break down sooner, but we still give it a year anyways, just to be safe. The author of those books that I mentioned, he's been doing this, like I said, since the 70s. He lives in Pennsylvania, and he uses his um, compost for his all of his plants, even the edible plants. So it's literally closing the loop. So uh, if you live in the city or you live in a populated area, we're wasting all kinds of fresh water and you know it's you just get so used to those conveniences you turn on the faucet water comes out the you just go to the toilet there's water and you flush it but if anything ever happened and you know so, so in an emergency or the grid went down or something like that you don't have any of those conveniences so when you're living off grid it can be a lot more challenging because you have to find solutions to all these but in most cases if the grid goes down you'll be totally fine because you already have your system set up so much love. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your system is too. And I will talk to you soon.